The 100 Thunderbolts were built in three groups and were not all identical, with some materials and construction being different on different cars. The first group of cars were fully built by Ford before sending them to DST, where they were completely dismantled before reassembly into Thunderbolts. The second and third groups were not assembled at the factory. Instead, they were shipped in pieces to DST and assembled there. Given the high number of specialised cars to be produced, the second assembly method was clearly more efficient. Group 1 cars were painted vintage burgundy, full colour code X, while group 2 and 3 cars were painted Wimbledon white, full colour code M, which funnily enough was the same colour white as used on the later Shelby GT350. Group 1 ran from October 1963 to December 1963, consisted of 11 cars, all vintage burgundy with tan interiors, made up of 10 4 speeds and 1 automatic, which would be the only ever automatic vintage burgundy car. Group 2 ran from December 1963 to February 1964, consisted of 39 cars, all Wimbledon white, 9 four speeds and 30 all manks. Group 3 ran from March 1964 to May 1964, consisted of 50 cars, again all Wimbledon white, with 22 four speeds and 28 all manks. There however has been some debate over the exact number of Thunderbolts produced. While sources disagree, the total number built is believed to be somewhere between 100 and 127 cars. But as of 2024, the exact number is still to be confirmed. While the Thunderbolt was built for the singular purpose of dominating the competition at the drag strip, the Thunderbolt was technically street legal, though it wasn't exactly ideal for use on public roads. And due to the nature of these vehicles, all Thunderbolts received a rare fit and finish disclaimer plate riveted to the inside of the glove box door. So Ford had the last laugh when they replaced their reliable big block powered galaxies with a new experimental fair lane, a move that made all the difference and propelled them to win the 1964 NHRA Manufacturers Cup. Thunderbolts faced off in the final of the 1964 NHRA Winter Nationals, driven by Butch Lill and Gas Ronda. Ronda took the win with a pass of 11.78 seconds at 123.4 miles per hour. Ronda's Thunderbolt would go on to claim the NHRA National Top Stock Crown that year and won the 1964 Superstock Championship. Bill Lawton set the national speed record in an AFX at 121.29 in late 1963 at the Connecticut Dragon in his fair lane with a 427 high riser and dual quad carburetors. The Thunderbolts delivered everything that Ford had hoped for. These cars were essentially as close to warp speed as you could buy from the factory at that time. Some of the best times recorded during that period were in the very low 11 second range. The lowest quarter mile time I could find was for Dick Brannan who took his car to the Superstock Bonanza at the US Dragway in Gary, Indiana to beat Arnie Bezik's Tempest with 11 0.08 seconds at 128 miles per hour in June 1964. Given its explosive debut, one might expect the Thunderbolt to have a long and distinguished racing career. However, by 1965, the racing landscape had shifted towards placing large displacement engines into smaller, more compact cars and bringing us back to the rise of the pony cars. This shift made drag cars like the Thunderbolt less relevant, resulting in only one year of production. Additionally, NHRA rule changes for superstock competition, which required 500 vehicles to be built for homologation instead of the original 100, also contributed to the demise of the Thunderbolt. There were no warranties with the Thunderbolt, and each car was to be picked up from Dearborn. Ford lost money on each car, ultimately selling them for $3,900 for four speeds and $4,000 for autos, losing $1,500 to $2,000 on each Thunderbolt sold at that sticker price. In 1960, the Mercury Comet competed in NHRA events, specifically the AFX Factory Experimental class. Notably, the Sox and Martin team campaigned an AFX Mercury Comet Caliente at the 1964 NHRA Winter Nationals. The Comets competed in the AFX class so that there wouldn't be any conflict with their sibling, the Thunderbolt, in Superstock. Mercury also played the Factory Lightweight game again in 1965, running the AFX Factory Experimental category of the eight comets built for the 1965 season by Bill Strop in Long Beach, California. Four were equipped with the new 427 single overhead cam camera, while four received the tried and true 427 iRiser. All used fiberglass hoods, 
front fenders, doors with bucket seats and plexiglass windshields and side glasses, slashing the race weight to a slim £3,215. Today, factory number matching Thunderbolts are among the pinnacle collector cars for Ford enthusiasts with prices routinely reaching into the multi six figure range. The 1964 Ford Fairlane Thunderbolt was a legendary muscle car designed for the drag strip. It featured a lightweight body, fiberglass components, and a powerful 427 or 7 litre V8 engine with upwards of 600 horsepower and dominated the quarter mile drag strip. The Thunderbolt's brief but impactful existence left an indelible mark on American automotive history, showcasing the marriage of raw power and purpose-built engineering.